Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Power Podcast All-Star Livestream Series. I'm your co-host slash moderator, Brother Bedford, and we want to thank you for sharing with us your most valuable asset, your most valuable resource, and I think everyone is beginning to understand that it is their most valuable resource. It is your time. Your time is valuable, and we thank you for sharing some time, an hour out of your evening with us, uh, and our hope is that we provide value in exchange for your time, right? We hope that you're well rewarded by listening to all of the uh, bright minds, all of the thought leaders, all of the entrepreneurs and business leaders that we've been bringing to you. We hope and pray that you've been taking that information and, uh, and absorbing it, uh, studying it. I mean, I've been going back, watching the videos, taking copious notes, uh, making sure I don't miss anything because I want to be prepared when this is over. Uh, because it will end, it will be over, and proper preparation prevents poor performance, right? So we want to be able to perform on the other side of this. So make sure you get the information and prepare from all of the all-stars that we've had before. We had another all-star, really a rock star, coming to you tonight and going to help you with your productivity. And before we get into dealing with all of that, which a lot of us are trying to find ways to be more productive and really get some things moving, let's just take care of a little housekeeping real quick. What I want you to do and need you to do and, and request very humbly of you to go ahead below, go ahead and type in your name and where you're from. That would be so greatly appreciated. We've been getting people from Singapore, Paris, uh, the UK, all, all over the UK, South Africa, uh, Ghana, Brazil, Barbados, and of course, all across the United States and all throughout Canada, we've had people chiming in and thoroughly enjoying the information. So we want to know where you're from. We want to know what it is that we can do to help serve you. So let us know if you've been watching the previous podcast and what's your takeaways from tonight's podcast. So go ahead and type in your name and where you're from. The next thing I need you to do is go ahead and love the page. Follow Dr. George C. Frazier's fan page. That way you'll get notified with all of the provocative thought, I mean, just mind blowing things that Dr. Frazier shares with us on a daily basis. We wanna make sure that you get that. So do that, go ahead and follow the page. You'll get notified and you'll also be able to get the notifications of all of the future podcasts that are coming up. And we still have a, a few more barn burners coming up for you in just a, a matter of fact, tomorrow we got a great special bonus podcast coming for you. And we're gonna give you the link to that at the end of this podcast. But a lot of people have been asking us, how are we doing this? I wanna know how to do this. I wanna learn how to do what Dr. Frazier is doing. So Dr. Frazier said, okay, we're gonna show you. So we have a special Zoom webinar that we're gonna put on for you tomorrow, but you have to have a special link. You have to sign up and Dr. Frazier will give you that link at the conclusion of today's uh, show with Baird Matthews. And then also we have coming up this Thursday is Andy Henriquez. You talk about a storyteller. You wanna talk about monetizing your story and making money. That's this Thursday. We have Andy Henriquez who's gonna be speaking to you. So as you can see, we're not stopping and we encourage you not to stop as well. There's one more way that you can get the notifications about all of the future podcasts that are coming up and even the podcasts that you may have missed. Go to www newblackpower.com. Give us your name and your email. Make sure you confirm the email. Some people say that I'm not getting the notification at, and that's simply because you have to confirm because we don't spam. And truth, that's against the law. For all of you who are spamming people, that's against the law. You should not be spamming people about your products and services. Find ways to build relationships, nurture those relationships, provide value, and you'll find it as Dr. Frazier has always said, you can't get out of the way of money if you follow this prescription to get money. So that's what we, we wanna practice what we preach. And so that's what we want you to do. Confirm that email and then we'll start giving you valuable content and resources. And so with that said, I think we've taken care of all of the housekeeping, let you know about a few things coming up. The last thing to do is just put you into the hands of our Hall of Famer, uh, the man who has started the networking and effective relationship conversation in the African-American community for over 30 plus years have been, uh, we talk about someone who's been on the battlefield, really helping us to understand how to navigate trying times, including a time like this. And so without further delay, I want to turn you over into the hands of our host, Dr. George C. Frazier. 
Good evening, Brother Bedford. Good evening, my brother, Dr. Barrett Matthews in the house. Thank you so much for your time, man. Brother Bedford, thank you for the always uh, uh, an incredible introduction. You tee and frame up the whole thing uh, like no other. I deeply appreciate that. Um, we are on a sabbatical, all of us. It has been probably one of the most productive periods of my life. I have not had a 16 week sabbatical in 75 years of living. I have not had this much free time on my hand. It's not really free. We're paying for it, we're aging. So you're paying for it with age. So you might as well use it well. And the stuff that I've been able to get done uh, makes Dr. Barrett Matthews, the brother who's gonna be with us tonight, the perfect, guest. Now, I, I, when we were planning this back in February and March, we had no idea it was going to be a pandemic. But if we've got to live through one, and we do, we, we really want to know how to be the most productive during this period of time. I've learned, even at 75, I've learned a lot of lessons about Dr. George Fraser, uh, his good habits and his bad habits, his propensity to procrastinate on tough assignments and put in front of those tough assignments, easy assignments, and I'll say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the next day, I'll do it next week. Um, and uh, as a result, much has piled up. And so maybe this is just God, you know, God's way of helping us all to sort of think about how uh, we conduct our lives, how efficient are we? And another way of talking about Dr. Barrett is he is, a, in a sense, an efficiency expert. That's an old school term. Uh, it's now productivity, and that's what he's gonna talk about tonight, productivity on steroids. And he's eminently qualified. We, we don't have anyone on our all-star podcast that is not eminently qualified. Uh, and a subject matter expert. Uh, he bears that out. He is certainly on the faculty of the Power Networking Conference. You'll meet him live and in living color at the Power Networking Conference, October the 14th through the 17th. So let me shut up because I want to give most of the time to Dr. Barrett. Uh, I'm going to do a dramatic read on his bio, uh, which is absolutely stellar. Um, and, and then we're going to go right into some, some questions. I think they're great questions. Um, a lot of people would think they're tough questions, but not if you have the, the body of knowledge and the expertise that he has in this particular subject. Uh, Dr. Barrett Matthews is an authority on execution and productivity expert, known as the get it done coach, and he's done some coaching at the Power Networking Conference for us, known as the excuse killer and the productive podcaster. Barrett serves uh, and has shared his unique brand of productivity genius with organizations like Metro Public Adjustment, uh, the Black Speakers Network, and Prime America. Barrett is also the author of several books, including Why Didn't You Get It Done? Sounds like he's talking to me. Uh, Fifty Shades of Wealth and A Call to Action, which he has used to help elevate the productivity of the business people that he works with. He has a strong background in media, whether it be radio, print, television, with a stint at CBS Sports and its affiliates and hosting several radio shows and podcasts, including the Black CEO Morning Show, Lunch and Learn with Chris and Barrett, and Revenue Radio. Barrett is one of the uh, one of the world's renowned black belt speakers and dubbed as one of the original stage crushers by Delatoro McNeil with Delatoro McNeil of what of course you heard from Delatoro last week who crushed the stage uh, while receiving an honorary doctorate of humanities uh, by the United Graduate College and Seminary International Barrett was recognized as a world civility ambassador in 2020 by I Change Nations and as the distinguished leader for the 2019 Diplomacy Leadership Honorary President 
uh, Award winner for 2015 and selected as a digital facilitator, super coach, and faculty presenter, as I said earlier, at the Power Networking Conference from 2016 right on up till now when we do it in October. Uh, finally, Barrett is committed to showing executives how to start and grow any business productively with any product and any service by utilizing media with his creative insight and unique way of seeing the larger picture. We welcome to our, pat, our podcast, Dr. Barrett Matthews. Barrett, thank God you. Bless you. I'm glad to be thank here. You. <laughs> You're in the house. I'm in the house. Um, I'm honored. No, 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 we're honored. We were talking before the show went live how fortuitous your appearance is tonight with productivity being the central theme of almost everybody watching here. I'm sure that everybody watching um, has talked about in the quiet of their own mind how they have been more productive. Uh, I don't know how you can't be with this much time on your hand. Talk us through for a moment. We're going to just touch base a little bit on COVID-19. Mm -hmm. What are we learning? And well, what are we missing? Right? What are we learning and what are we missing? I know what I've been missing. But yeah, it's know, thing. That's the thing. What we're learning is a, it's more a matter of what should we be learning. Um, I, I can't say that everybody is learning. I would hope that we are learning more about what we're made of. And what God put in, if you, you mentioned a second ago that God may have put this in place so that we could actually get into our productivity. And I firmly believe that. I, I always tell people, God will bring, you to, will bring you to him either on your knees or on your back. It, it, right. it, your choice. <laughs> but the thing is, we have, we have to learn to use this situation in the right way. Now, Personally, I've learned that I can do a lot more by myself. I've learned that I can get a lot more accomplished by myself than I gave myself credit for before. I learned that my mind works a lot differently when I'm by myself. I actually can be more creative. I, sometimes we think that we need other people to do that. But when you're alone with your own thoughts, oh my goodness, it, it's incredible. And we as entrepreneurs, your mind is constantly thinking of different things. Sometimes you have to put the brakes on them and say, whoa, whoa, right. Right. I need to slow down. But I've learned that I can do a lot more. And I've had, since this has happened, like you, I've been much more productive. I've got new businesses in place. I've got more businesses that I'm getting ready to start. I just had meetings this in the last week of starting another business venture with someone else. And so that's one of the things I've learned. Now, what we're missing, you and I talked about this yesterday. A lot of us are missing the fact that this is an opportunity. This is a prime opportunity. If you think this is a vacation, you're not seeing it. If you are sitting there with a remote control in your hand, talking about what's on Netflix all day, what's on Hulu, whatever, you are missing this. Mm. Because guess what? The people that you're watching on Netflix and Hulu, they're thinking of more ways to be creative. The people who, some of you are waiting for sports to begin. Don't get me wrong, I love sports. But guess what? They got paid. <laughs> They've gotten paid already. Right. You are missing an opportunity if you are not seeing this. This is a wide open chance because here's the thing. Millionaires, billionaires are created during a time of crisis. You have to find out where you fit in. Where's, your, where's, where's the hole you're supposed to fill? What is it that you're supposed to do that makes people say, that's the person that changed my life? Mm -hmm. If you don't see it, you're, you're missing a great opportunity right now. I challenge you. I challenge you. Sit back tonight. Write down all of the things you do. Find out all the things that are missing right now and figure out how you can make those things happen. Even if you have to partner with someone figure out a way to make that happen so you don't miss this great opportunity. That's, that's what I see, Dr. Fraser. Yeah. What is your definition of productivity? Well, the 
technical definition of productivity is output divided by input. And a lot of people in business see productivity as making their product or their service better or putting the sales in a better position. That's productivity to them. Mm -hmm. I simplify it. I, to me, it's, it's more or less improvement. Just, mm -hmm. it can be a 1% improvement, but that's productivity. If, if you think about a, a snowball rolling down, rolling down a hill, it, every time it rolls, it improves a little bit. It gets better and better or bigger and bigger as it may, as it may be. But the thing is, it may not seem like much to us, but by the time it gets to a certain point, it becomes dangerous. Well, the thing is, you can do the same thing as long as you constantly improve. If you do one thing better today than you did yesterday, that's productivity in my book. But mm -hmm. you have to constantly do it. And here's the thing. You have to make it intentional. It has to be intentional. When, when I first met you, I was, I was doing an event here in Maryland. Well, you were doing an event here in Maryland. I was asked to just come pick you up. And I remember that right. I told you I was working on a book called Why Didn't You Get It Done? And you said, oh, that's a that, good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's when I first met you. And I made it a point. I was intentional about making sure that whenever you were around, that I got to see you. That was not by chance. So when I went to Power Networking Conference, we were in Dallas. I went there. I made sure that I saw you, shook your hand. Then the next year, we were in Dallas again. Then you made an announcement. You said, we are going to be in Prince George's County, Maryland for the next few years. I said, oh, he's going to be in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Now I really got to be intentional. I have to make sure this man not only knows me, but that I am in the situation to where I can be in front of the people that he is, that he is gathering for this event. So there came an opportunity to, to go to the retreat in Ohio. And, and, and thank you so much, Dr. Fred. I love that opportunity with, with Ratanji. We, we had a great time. I learned so much. I learned so much, but the thing is, this was all part of something I intentionally did to make myself more productive in the future. If you're not doing anything to make yourself productive intentionally, then you won't get there because you have no idea of what you're trying to do. You're just moving. And, and see, being busy is not productive. You have right. to have something in mind, what you want to accomplish out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I was focused on being productive, but I had a plan as to what I wanted to do. You better have a plan to do that because being productive is not just a whim. Mm -hmm. It's not something that just, people study this. It's not something that just happens. It's something that you have to plan for and get better to, to get better. If you don't plan for it, you're going to be left behind by with everyone else who procrastinates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes I put whatever I choose to do through a little equation it simply goes, is this the highest and best use of my time? Is this the highest and best use of my time? Should I take two hours to wash my car? Mm -hmm. Or should I take my car to uh, a car wash right. and pay them $15 and they can get it done in 15 minutes? So I don't wash my car. Not because I can't wash my car. I used to wash my car, but I don't wash my car anymore because it's not the highest and best use of my exactly. time. When you consider the the amount of hours I would have to invest in it to get it right. right. And, and and so I that to me is a little equation for productivity. Is this the I highest agree. and best use of my time? Right? That, that's accurate. Yeah, yeah. You so so productivity on steroids. Which is the title of your 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 lecture, your your class, your training today? Uh, what is that? What is productivity on steroids? Steroids. Well, first, let, let's talk about steroids. When we when we usually talk about something on steroids, we think about the anabolic steroids that a lot of these athletes were accused of using that help to improve muscle mass or bone synthesis, and they they made it so they could perform better usually the performance enhancing steroids. That's what we think about when we talk about it. But, but steroids are used in medicine to help with inflammation. Now, it helps to relieve pain. It, it helps to, to promote growth as well. The thing about that is that procrastination is our pain. Procrastination mm -hmm. is our pain. 
It is causing us to get inflamed sometimes physically around our midsection. It's because we're sitting around doing nothing. It is causing the inflammation around our brains because we are not doing anything. We need an injection of some type of steroid to, to boost our productivity. Now, what is productivity on steroids? It means you have to go through massive change. Massive results have to come from massive change. I remember you, Dr. Fraser, saying years ago that if you don't like change, you're really going to hate growth. That, <laughs> right. that has stuck with me. <laughs> when you said that, it stuck with me. Because here's the thing about that. We are in change constantly. The, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, the only thing that's constant is change. Right. So knowing that, I, wanna, I want to rebut something that we have been hearing over and over again, and that is the new normal. There is no such thing as the new normal because we are in a constant state of change. Mm. We're constantly changing. So that we don't have time to get normal. We, we don't have time. You're in, see, we're just in something different right now. It's still changed. Guess what? I don't even have to ask. I know that Brother Bedford and Dr. Fraser did not do everything the same today that they did yesterday. That means something changed. I, guess what? It's going to happen again tomorrow. It's going to happen again tomorrow. There's going to be change. We're in a state of change all the time. So first of all, I, I'm saying that because I want you to get that new normal mess out of your head. Get it out of your head. There is no such thing as a new normal. We're in change. I just said a minute ago, you better get used to what's happening and you better find out what hole you can fill and you better do it fast because if you don't, someone else is going to fill that hole and you're going to regret it. You're going to feel bad that you did not get in there and do what you could have done when they did it. Here's one thing I firmly believe what, what God does. God puts, puts an idea in your head for you to make, to, for you to utilize. If you don't utilize it, he's going to find someone else who will. So mm -hmm. you had better jump on it right now. Get moving on it. Now, how do you do that? You got to change your thoughts. And that, that, that sounds a little hard. You got to change your thoughts. Well, one way to change your thoughts is to stop what's being programmed in your mind. What mm. are you reading? Are you reading sports magazines? Are you reading romance novels? How is that going to change your bottom line? Are you watching TV all the time? I, I know one, one, of, uh, one of our friends, and a friend of yours as well, uh, uh, Myron Golden, says you shouldn't even have a TV unless you're making 20000 a month. So, so the thing is, you better at least unplug it. Heck, do this. Unplug your TV until 10 o'clock at night and see what you get done throughout the day. Because right now you're stuck at home. You're stuck at home unless you're an essential worker. You're stuck at home. So you have so many hours in the day that you can be productive, that you can get something done. Now, set a schedule for yourself or the things you need to do. Set a timer. You can get an egg timer. Just time out hours, a lot time for yourself that you have to get things done. When that timer goes off, move to the next thing. Now, I don't care that you finish it or not. I don't care if you finish it. Just get going on it. Because guess what? By the end of the day, when that timer goes off and goes off and goes off and goes off, you're going to have a lot of things in motion now. Once they're in motion, it's hard for you to stop. It's hard for you to stop once you get them in motion. But what's happening is you're sitting there on the couch watching TV Look, Steve Harvey don't care that you're watching Family Feud. I'm, I'm letting you know that right now. Right. So while you're doing that, nothing's getting done. Nothing's getting done. So what you need to do is make sure that you're getting something done each day. The best way to do it is to do it in increments. Because see what happens, a lot of us, we start on a project, which I'm going to do this all day long. You get bored quickly. You get mm. bored. Then you stop. Then you walk around. Then you eat something. Then you watch TV, and guess what? You don't go back to working. And what happens is the thing doesn't get done because you got bored. Break it up. Do it in increments where you got to move on to the next thing. Once you do that, it's in motion. Once it's in motion, you won't stop. That's one way to help you get on your productivity on steroids. Another thing that this is going to hurt some of you, I'm gonna, but I'm going to say it because I love you. Get rid of some of your friends. Get rid of some of your friends. There's an expression I heard a long time ago, and it says, if you can't change, change your friends, you got to change your friends. 
Mm-hmm. Some of that went over some went over somebody's head there. If you can't <laughs> change your friends, you got to change your friends. Understand that some of the biggest obstacles that we have, some of the biggest anchors that we have, we love. We love. Now, I didn't say stop loving them. I didn't say stop loving them. I'm saying they can't be a part of this journey. They can't be a part. How many times have we heard some, say, say to someone, hey, you know, I want to do this and I want you to come with me. I want you to work with me. And they say, well, you know, um, I want to see how you do. And I tell people, I'm not coming back for you. I'm asking you to come with me. If you don't want to come back, then hey, see you. I'm gone. Because right. there's an expression that says, don't look back because you're not going in that direction. So right. if I'm not going in that direction, I got to move forward. That's productivity. Some of those people get left behind. Harriet Tubman knew she couldn't take everybody with her. Right. Some of them wanted to stay behind, and she had to leave them behind. You have to be okay with that. It doesn't mean you don't love them. It, it, and stop worrying about what they think about you because what they think about you, that's their business. That's their business. It's not yours. You have to continue to move forward. If you don't, those things won't happen. Now, here's what I, I have to say, Dr. Fraser. I told you earlier, I believe that God puts ideas in our heads and we have to act upon them. When you don't act upon them, to me, this is just my opinion, and this is not written anywhere in the gospel, but to me, you're smacking God in the face. You're saying, God, you don't know what's best for me. When you don't act on what he put in, in your mind to do, what he put on your heart to do, when you don't act on it, you're just saying to God, you don't know what's good for me, and I don't, I don't need you to do this for me. And God will give it to someone else. So don't sit there wondering what happened to that blessing you wanted. He just gave it to you. Oh, it required work? Oh, 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 heaven forbid. It required, it required you to get about the bed? It required you to get up off the couch? It required you to actually get your hands dirty? It required you to think a little bit more? It required you to stay up later at night? Well, I, I'm sorry about that. that that's, that's part of success. And here's the thing you have to understand about success. Success and convenience don't mix. Success and comfort don't mix. Everybody, and I mean everybody, who has been successful in the history of this world has had to get uncomfortable. Don't believe me? Look up the name Jesus Christ, <laughs> if you don't believe me. Look up that name. Everybody has had to get uncomfortable to make things happen. So in order for you to be productive, you're going to have to go through a massive change. Now, you just heard me mention Jesus Christ. You think Jesus Christ had a, Christ had a massive change to be successful, to be productive? He had a massive – I'm not even talking about the crucifixion. I'm talking about the 40 days and 40 nights of temptation and fasting. You don't think that's a massive change? You do it. <laughs> you do it. Yeah. And see, see if you don't get tempted. See if everything doesn't come at you. Understand that massive growth has to come from massive change. That is when and that is only when you will get to be productive, as I say, on steroids. Mm, mm. Um, you've given a, a very nice little formula of, on, on how to break through on, on procrastination. That, that's just a, 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 a global problem. Just mm -hmm. most people procrastinate. And I love the thought of just <clears throat> sort of taking this task and chunking it into small pieces, right? And, mm -hmm. and getting it done incrementally over time. I, I have a way that, that I say that first things first, second things never. Do the first thing right? Do the first thing, do it with excellence. Then once you complete that, the second thing now becomes the first thing. Yes. So it's the way we can look at big tasks too. I love, so I love your idea about chunking it, doing it in small pieces until it finally gets done. You, you, you have a thought in a theory, maybe, um, but certainly a strong feeling about uh, why is it, you know, that you feel um, that we as black people are procrastinating on taking on entrepreneurship, taking on entrepreneurship. Why are we procrastinating on that? Well, we drank the Kool-Aid, unfortunately, Dr. Fraser. Um, we have, been programmed, conditioned 
to thinking that entrepreneurship is not the best way to go about things. Uh, the Industrial Revolution brought about jobs. And most of us bought into that because, I mean, keep in mind, our history led us there because you come from slave to come to share, sharecropping, and then you go into that you can actually have a job. It, 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 at that time, it was a way to go, but a lot of us wondered, you know, how would we have the freedom? Some people did have businesses. Some of them were destroyed and taken away from us. So I, I, I get where it comes from and the history and so forth. Of, but the thing is right now, a lot of us are conditioned for, through many, many decades now of thinking that jobs are the way to go. It's so much so, and I know you had mentioned uh, that you have uh, Dr. Julius Garvey, uh, the Senator Marcus Garvey coming up. Yes. And I was reading in one of, uh, a, a favorite book of mine and yours, the, the, the Jewish Phenomenon. And it talked about how when Marcus Garvey was doing his Pan-African Pan movement, a lot of the Jews were in support of us having our own, having our own. But what happened was the powers that be, so to speak, threw jobs at black people. They threw jobs at us. And if you notice, and I've noticed ever since I read that book, I have been on high alert for it. Every time I see a politician running for office and they ask them about the black vote, the first thing they say is, well, I have jobs for them. We have yeah. plenty of jobs for them. Right. Because they know that's the bait. That that's is Donald Trump's claim to fame, right? Jobs, he got more jobs for black people. You don't even want to unpack that. <laughs> right, that's his claim to fame, right? That is his claim to fame, you're right. You're right. You're right. More businesses. And he's funded, he's uh, funded more businesses. He says jobs. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that, and that's it. And, and, but the thing is, Dr. Fraser, because that's the language, that's the political language they know that gets through to black people. Mm -hmm. The political language is tell them you have jobs for them. And because of that, we get so caught up in, in jobs. Like we talked at the top of the show, this is an opportunity now. This is an opportunity to start those businesses. To, to fulfill all those dreams you've been talking about in the past, this is the opportunity to do so. I remember a couple times when the government shut down, so to speak. I, so many people I know said, you know what, I got to start my business now because I don't know what this government's going to do. Then the government said, oh, well, we're open. Oh, they said, never mind, I'm going back. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was just that quick because they've been conditioned into thinking that that is the only way to go is to have a job. So that being said, we procrastinate on, on, on entrepreneurship because we're looking for safety. We're looking for, here's, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for financial security when we should be looking for financial freedom. Right. And that is the thing that we've been conditioned to. I, I need security. Well, you know what? Prisoners have security. Prisoners mm -hmm. have security. So mm -hmm. what you want is the financial freedom. And you can't get the financial freedom as long as someone else controls everything. If they can give you that job, guess what? They can take the job away. And many of us, unfortunately, have seen that, especially during the COVID-19 crisis. We've seen jobs have been gone. But it's a time for us to actually act on it. We, we don't have time to sit back and wallow in the fact that we're unemployed or sit there and lament the fact that we have gotten our pay cut or boo-hoo over the fact that we may not have a job you know, once this thing is over. This is the time to act. There's always something you can do to build up your life, to build a business around, and then somebody's going to want it. You just have to find that audience. I know Brother Bedford is an expert in finding that audience, the, 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 the people that you're tried to go after it. And it's one of those things that we have to do because if we keep on procrastinating on that, we're going to find ourselves in a worse, worse situation than we are in now. Do you have a map, like a GPS, if someone is thinking about getting involved in entrepreneurship? I, I actually have I have a program I, I work with. What's the prescription? What do you think the prescriptions are? Step one, step two, step three. Well, step, step one is to first of all change your mindset. That's that's the first that's the first thing you have to do. You have to change your mindset 
around what you've been taught and conditioned. And it's probably the hardest step. It's probably the hardest step because you have to change your mindset. The second step is to find out what is your gift? What is your gift? What is your mm -hmm. unique proposition that you bring to the table that someone else may not do like you? Thirdly, mm -hmm. is to find out who is the audience for it? Who wants it? Who is, who is your tribe? Who wants it? Those are the main three steps. If you have those things in order, the world is your oyster, so to speak, because you don't have, and, and it, that's the great thing about what we have with technology today, you don't have to stay local. Right. You don't have to stay local. You can go internationally and sell your business to people, and there's somebody around there wanting it, as long as it's viable, as long as it's somebody that needs it, as long as you have, have mastered it, and as long as you understand that this is the way to go, you can do that. Okay. Um, I, I think there's a lot of fear uh, amongst some people about getting started in business. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps, would you agree that one of the ways of changing your mindset would be simply hang out with people who are entrepreneurs? Yeah, right? I, I do. Affected, and, and affected by their conversation and their success? Oh, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. You, you, you ought to have a mentor, someone who's been through, someone who's been through the battle, so to speak. And I always say, it's not fear. It's not fear that gets people. It's anxiety most of the time. Mm. And th the difference is, with, for those of you watching here, fear is a clear and present danger. Anxiety is something you made up. Oh. Here's what I mean by that. If someone, if I walk outside right now and someone puts a gun to my head and says they're going to kill me, that is a fear, a fear that this gun is going to go off and kill me. But if I'm afraid to go outside now because someone may put a gun to my head, I just made that up because I don't know that there's a gun coming to my head, but I've made it up. A lot of people don't start a business because of anxiety of what could go wrong. Mm -hmm. What could go wrong instead of focusing on what could go right. And back to what you just said, Dr. Fraser, mm -hmm. if you get with someone who has been through the battles, who, has, who can teach you what to do and what not to do, yes, most definitely, it can help you to, to not only get your business going, but it can help you be more productive because you don't make those mistakes. Yeah. Um, yeah, th th that's an important insight. Your path to entrepreneurship, were your parents entrepreneurs? No, they were both working for the government. Okay. Well, did you work for the government? Uh, as a teenager, I did, I did a summer job working for uh, a, a Department of Agriculture had a program called uh, Youth Conservation Corps, where we pretty much cleaned up Department of Agriculture land and so forth. That was my only stint with the government. I had, and I think you can understand this, there was something innate in me that just said, I have to do something different. And I did whatever I could. They, they, you had two choices when I was growing up, either work for the government or be a school teacher. I didn't want to be either one. And I just knew that I had to do something different. I know my parents, they, they did what they had to do in that era. But for me, I just didn't want to do either one of those things. And they, they encouraged me to. I just didn't want to do, you know, government work. You know, I'm here in the D.C. area, so everybody's government. Right. That, that's right. Yeah. It's one of the wealthiest uh, counties. Prince George's County, that area, mm -hmm. uh, is one of the wealthiest counties, black counties in America. Yeah. Um, so are, you're saying that right out of school, you went into business ownership and ultimately entrepreneurship? No, no, actually right out of school, I, I was a media major and I did internships in, in television. And one of the stations was right. WUSA TV here in DC. And actually a gentleman you're very familiar with, James Brown took me under his wing. Oh yeah. He, took, he, was, he was a weekend sportscaster here at the time. And he took me under his wing. He, I walked into the sports room one day and he said, hey, Anybody know some names from race car drivers? So I named off some race car drivers. And he goes, wow, a brother that knows auto racing. I don't know auto racing. I just knew the names. But, but he then, he took me under his wing. He, he invited me to do different things with him, go different places with him. Then 
he called me one day and asked me would I be interested in working for the network at CBS Sports. Now keep in mind, when I was in college, I told all my friends I was going to work for CBS Sports one day. I did not think it would happen two years out of school, but because of that relationship, it helped me get there. But that's when I saw the, the teeth of corporate America. Um, and that's where I saw the, the ugly side of things. And they decided that they would, some people bad mouth me and ended up not renewing my contract because of that. That's what got me into entrepreneurship after that. I actually eased into it through network marketing. And that I learned that, you know what, I control this. You know, they can't just get rid of me just because they don't like me. And so that's what got me into business. All right. So your first toe in the water was basically to learn selling skills. You, you, you engaged in network marketing. Yes. And eventually one thing led to another. Exactly. And, into, yeah. Okay. So that was, that was, that was your, your track. Um, um, what, um, what are some of the tools um, that can be used to improve a productivity? Well, one of the tools, the, the biggest tool is your mind. It, it's, it's the mind. Like I said, you have to change your thought and you, you change your thoughts rather. But the biggest tool that you can use in productivity is reading. Reading, I, I, I hear you ask people all the time, what are you reading? You know, what book are you reading? It's, it's so important that you find books that are going to put you in a position to win. Yeah. I don't read, you know, books on fiction or stuff like that. I read books that are gonna help me to do better, to make myself better. When you wake up every morning, negativity is waiting for you. It's waiting for you. You have got to arm yourself and be ready for it. So what I do is one, I put a tool of books in, in, in place for myself. Two, I make sure that I'm listening to audios or watching videos of people who can pour into me. Three, I am surrounding myself with people, people who are positive, who can help me grow. Guess what? People who are smarter than me, like Dr. Fraser, Brother Bedford, people who, who, who can teach me some things. I do that. Mm -hmm. And the biggest tool is belief in yourself, in yourself, because as I said earlier, negativity is going to come at, at you and doubt is going to come at you. You're going to have so much doubt as an entrepreneurship, so much doubt. And I, and I could sugarcoat it and tell you that it's not going to happen. No, it happens. You doubt yourself a lot of times as an entrepreneurship and you have to be able to doubt your doubts, so to speak. You have to be able to distract the distractions because they're going to come too. But you, the, the biggest tool is books because you have to feed your mind. You have to make sure that you have to put audio and video in your mind and listen what you're listening to. Who are you talking to? Those are the tools that are going to make you a better person and more productive person. They're going to help you to get into entrepreneurship and stay there. Because if you don't do that, and like I said earlier, you have to be intentional about it and be consistent about it. Because if you don't, those things will leave you high and dry. I've seen so many entrepreneurs start out they were doing the right things, but they stopped one of those things. They stopped that activity that got them there. And when that stopped, it snowballed the other, the other way. And all of a sudden, they're back working corporate America again. And they're, 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 they will never touch entrepreneurship again. Are you, um, I, I'm sort of anal about lists. Every day, I have a list. I get my greatest joy during the day crossing stuff off my list. I could have something as simple as call Dr. Barrett Matthews and review something. And I call you and I spend the time and we talk, whatever. And then I can cross that off. I got that. Are you, does that help productivity lists? You have, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I do the same thing. I have lists. I have, I have lists. Look, let me tell you, before the year starts, I go over what my goals are for the year. I put together a whole list of things I want to accomplish for the year. Then what I do is I break them down into quarters. Which quarter I want to do this, which quarter I want to do that. Then I break each quarter down into months. 
So I know what I need to accomplish this month, what I need to accomplish this month. So then it's easier for me to go into my weekly goals if I know what I have to accomplish that month. So I can write that down. Then I put a list together for daily goals. Before I go to bed, I go over what I have to accomplish the next day. So when I go up, wake up the next morning, I already know what I have to jump into. So yes, lists are vital. Now, one of the things that I do, and it's another tool you can have, I added an app to my phone called Alarmed. And what Alarmed does is I can set in there whatever I want to get done, and I set a time for it and a day for it. If it's something that's recurring, it can, I can set it to repeat. So that alarm goes off on my phone, so I know, nope, got to do this now, got to do that. The thing is, I make sure, look, I can't leave everything up to me. <laughs> I can't leave everything up to me because I will make myself angry by disappointing myself. So I make sure I put triggers in place. Uh, I know you, you, one of your books, The Power of Habits, so every day I put, I put things in place to help form habits. Habits mm. are not going to form while you're doing something today and then doing something three days from now. You got to make sure that you do it repeatedly so that a habit can form. And, and, and I put something in place, the alarm that helps me trigger that thing to get it going. So yeah, lists are vital as far as being productive. Um, podcasting is becoming very, very popular. We're going to do a special show on Wednesday tomorrow with the podcast queen, Marquesa Petaway, seven o'clock tomorrow night. Um, I, I really believe that our all-star podcast series, three times a week, seven, 7 p.m. every day, 30 incredible, brilliant brothers and sisters has helped to set the standards by which certainly black podcasting will be judged going forward in terms of content. Mm -hmm and people uh, and just productive and quality advice. Um, why is it that um, you think that black people have not embraced podcasting as a vehicle for business and revenue? Well, Thousands of podcasts, but not, not maybe now more than ever before, but right. what do you think that is? Well, the numbers, one, back it up. Um, black people represent only 11 or 12% of podcast listeners in the United States, whereas Caucasian people represent about 63%. Mm -hmm. Now, podcast listeners, and this is what I, I, when we talk about opportunity being missed, podcast listeners actually make greater income. They're usually higher educated, and they spend money. So that seems to me that that would be a market that I would want to target if I'm in business. But we as a people have not caught on yet because it's not terrestrial radio that we're used to listening to. It doesn't provide us with the ability to dance all the time. It doesn't provide us with the opportunity to sing all the time. Then you talk about the, the idea that, you know, we have television, like you have a, you have a video podcast situation going on here. It doesn't, provide us with the opportunity to laugh at a laugh track all the time. It's not quote unquote entertaining all the time. Now that doesn't mean you can't do a podcast that, in, that does the entertainment. It doesn't mean you can't do a podcast that provides a, a musical flow to it as well. But the thing is we go with what we're used to a lot of times. And what's happening right now is that we're not used to podcasting. It's coming. I, I went to a, a podcast movement conference in Los Angeles a couple months ago, right before the, the, the crisis happened. And I could count the people that looked like me on one hand. And it was, and I, and I was talking to another a lady there and we, I said, we got a long way to go. I said, we are so far behind this curve right now because we have to catch up to it. And it's one of those things that I, I don't know what it's gonna to take to get us there. And I, of course, I want us to get there before, you know, we've missed it entirely. But there are not a lot of of uh, black podcasters compared to you know people of other races. And don't get me wrong, when you talk about a global scale, the United States is not even the top is putting out podcasts. Actually, mm -hmm. I believe it's South Korea does more podcasts than than any other uh, than any other country. What are the what are the key what are the keys to being a good podcaster? I mean, what do you how do you prepare for that? I, mean, I I love that question because I tell people all the time, being a great podcaster, it takes time to become great at anything. 
but you have to get started at it. For instance, if you are a subject matter expert, and, and, and when I say subject matter expert, meaning that you know more about a subject than most people. Mm -hmm. If you know more about a subject than most people, you can talk on that subject. Start a podcast. Do, there are podcasts that last 10 minutes. There are podcasts that last an hour. But you can talk on that subject. You may make mistakes. You may flub words. But guess what? You get better as you go. You get better as you go. But if you don't get it started, nothing will happen. And you'll sit there saying, oh, I should start a podcast. I could have started a podcast. I wish I started a podcast. Start it. Because you never know what can come of it. Someone may listen to your subject matter and now want to do business with you. Someone may listen to your subject matter and may want to be a sponsor on your podcast, but it will never happen if you don't start it. And I, I tell people that all the time because I, I get asked about that a lot, about you know, what do I need to do? Start talking. Just start talking. I guarantee you, everybody here watching this, if I start talking about, to them about what they do, they can talk me to, to the cows come home about that subject. Just get a mic and start talking. Um, you could actually start a podcast teaching people in your kitchen how to make healthy soul food. I mean, you just you don't necessarily have to talk. You just have to know some a little something something about something that would be, and it could be just a micro niche, right? Yeah. But you have a specialty in it. You have an expertise, whether it's embroidering, whether it's knitting, uh, whether it's how to make healthy soul food, how to make smoothies. I mean, there are all kinds of subject matter, yeah. micro subjects, right? Not yeah. macro. You don't have to be a theoretical physicist to have a conversation, uh, uh, although there would be theoretical physicists who would watch the podcast. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and, and the thing is, George, that think out, you know, just think outside of the box. Just think, um, uh, what is it that you love? What is it that you feel? What is it that you want to talk about? And um, and what does it cost to start a podcast? I mean, oh, what God. does it cost? It, it, it can be really nothing to start a podcast, depending on what you have at your disposal. It's just a matter of uh, just getting in front, talking, hitting the, hitting the Like for instance, Zoom. Zoom is free. Zoom is free. There, you don't have to do. If you don't want to be on camera, you can do, set up Zoom to record your audio. You can do mm -hmm. free conference call, whatever. You can put it in, in a format and put it up and put it up to where you, know, you upload it to the podcast platform. You can actually do it and cost you nothing. You just have to get it going. You can. Yeah, you have to, exactly. Now, some inertia, some movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, back to productivity, mm -hmm. which is just an extremely crucial subject. What would be um, three strategies, Barrett, that are measurable mm -hmm. uh, that our audience can use to increase pro their productivity in the next 24 hours? In the next 24 hours, I love it. One is... <laughs> Put together a list right now of what you're going to accomplish in the next 24 hours. Put together, now, here's the thing. Don't put together a list of 10 things. Three to five. Three to five things that you're going to, and I'm not talking about cook breakfast. <laughs> right. Three things that are going to make you a better person in the next 24 hours. Put together that list. Then, I want you to go to a website. It's called Stick. S-T-I-C-K-K dot com. Stick dot com. Stick is a website that allows you to be accountable. What it will do, you put in what your goal is. And now, now this is not for your daily goal. This is for a, a, something that you can set up in place, though. If I, were to, if I were to go to Stick right now, and if I said, hey, I want to write a book in the next 30 days, I can go in and put that in there. Then what I, it says, you can assign a referee. The referee could be Brother Bedford. I then assign stakes. I can assign stakes, meaning that if I don't reach that goal, I have to pay $500 to the Power Networking Conference. So it, and, and what it does, if you set it up to where you have your stakes, you have your, your, your referee, and you have everything in place. See, the problem with, with accountability and productivity is that we don't hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. When we don't do something, 
We say, oh, well, I didn't get it done. No, nah, no, nah. you have to make sure you have a goal in place. So go to stick.com and do that. Then what I want you to do, the next thing that you can do in the next 24 hours, and actually this is something very measurable because I want you to go, because we have, we have a Facebook page here, right, George? Oh, yeah. I want you to go tell George what you did. Everybody. Good idea. Everybody. Tell George what you did. And, and I want, in the next 24 hours, tell that's, George what you did. Yeah. Because now we're going to get you moving in that direction of being productive. And now, I don't want you doing that every day. George, don't, don't bug George every day with what you did. But I want you to do it in the next 24 hours. Let George is not your accountability partner. But I want you to do it in the next 24 hours. Let George know what you did. Because I'm going to be looking at myself. And I want to see what you guys are doing. Okay, so so recap those three things again. One, two, One three. is make a list. Make a list of the things you're going to do in the next 24 hours. Two, go to stick.com, S-T-I-C-K-K.com. Go to stick.com and make it, put everything in place. Set a goal, get an accountability partner, get a referee, and have your stakes in place. The, the third thing, I want you to go on the Facebook page tomorrow after you have done those things. Let George know what you have done, what you've accomplished. Because you're going to feel so much better about yourself once you've accomplished. Tell me, you will. Um, okay. Uh, we, we're down to the last few minutes. So if a business owner or an aspiring business owner does not have your skills, let's say, how can they get started in being productive with what they possess? Well, here's the thing. There's a scripture. It's First um, Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. And what that is saying is that you, each of us has a unique gift. Each of us. You may not see it as being so big and so valuable, but God did. God gave it to you. And it's for you to use to help someone else. What you may want to do is just start using it. Once you start using it, someone will say, hey, I, I like that. Someone will say, hey, we can do something with that. Someone will say, hey, I think you may be able to start a business with that. But you have to use it. Don't sit on it saying nobody wants it. Just use it. Just use it. You, you'll be amazed at what will happen if you use the gifts that God gave you. Don't sit there and say, well, such and such has that same gift. No, they don't. No, they don't. They have a gift that, that, God, that God gave them. They, let's say you, you sing. The other person may sing, but you sing differently. Both of you sing differently. So don't say you have the same gift. You have a gift that is unique to you. Utilize that gift because once you start using it, things will come your way. If you sit on it, you know, they say if you don't use it, it, it goes away. Well, the thing is, you have to use that gift. And I'm telling you, as I said earlier, you will find out how you can change the world and someone will come to you and want you to change the world, but only, only if you use the gifts that God gave you. Okay. Um, you're an expert in podcasting. Uh, if someone wants to have a discussion with you, Barrett, about podcasting uh, to improve their productivity and profitability, how can they do that? With you. Oh, that's simple. This, they can just text me. Text the word podcast. Just text the word podcast to 929 244 4323. Podcast to 929 244 4323. We'll have a discussion. We'll talk about what you do, what your area of expertise is, how you can start a podcast that actually gets, gets your word out there, gets your message out there. Because I'm telling you, George, you know this already because you're doing it. If you start a podcast on your area of expertise, you'd be amazed as what kind of traffic will start coming towards you just because of that. But right now, yeah. you don't have a way to get out there. You can't go to have meetings like we used to right now. You can't go hold big That's forums true. like we like we used to all the time right now. Get out there and start podcasting. I'm telling you, it's the way to go. Amen. Um, Brother Bedford, do you have any questions? Do we have any questions from the audience that are burning that... Uh... Well, I think you answered a couple of the, the pressing questions. Um, I, I, one question that did come through, they wanted you to give the title of that book again, Barrett, that you mentioned that was one of your favorites and George's favorite. 
uh, the, the Jewish phenomenon. Okay, we want to make sure we put that in the comments. Yeah, I've read that. Sure Great. Get that. Yeah, and then the only other thing that, that I wanted to just, uh, I guess, expound on, because Linda had put something, Linda Clemens, who's uh, all of our favorites, uh, yeah. one of the catalysts for what we do, right? She, she helps <laughs> keep us on track. Um, but she had also mentioned about breaking down the podcast. And for those who are getting ready to uh, go over and, and really delve deeper with you on podcasting. I just wanted to explain something that she put in the comment about podcasting, because I think it's it sometimes it, it just needs to be demystified, right? Po podcasting, the reason that it kept that name of podcasting, it was the iPod, you know, audio files yeah. were not listened to, particularly music. Uh, we're talking, now I'm getting ready to date myself, you know, around 20 <laughs> years ago, 25 years ago. Yeah. And the first company that made that possible was of course Apple and they did it with their iPod, right? With their, their iPod device. And then they called every broadcast or audio file that was sent out, they called it a podcast. And now we know we don't have the iPod anymore, but the term stuck. So that's why we call it a podcast, but it's simply an audio or video file, simply what we're doing here. So in truth, as George always says, model the behavior you expect from your people. And so you're watching a podcast, you're listening yeah. to a podcast, you're watching the engagement. So if you just took copious notes from what we're doing right here, you know how to do a podcast. So now when you get in contact with Barrett, some of the questions may be, hey, you know what? I want to do it like George is doing it. How do I do that? And it'll make your transition into doing this a whole lot easier. And as you mentioned, it could be audio or video. So just think of it as radio and television. You could do both or you could do either or and still have major impact. So again, thank I just want to thank you, Barry. I want to thank you no, for thank sharing. Thank you, Brother Bethany. And, and this, just to add on to what you just said there, I actually work with people to demystify the technical aspect of it too. Yes. So thank you. Yeah. yeah not, and, not and, and Wednesday, well. we're going we're gonna to de yeah, demystify that with um, uh, Mrs. Petaway. And, and that's Wednesday, tomorrow night at seven o'clock. We'll, we'll go, go to my... Um, the social media pages, whether it is Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, and all the information about that for tomorrow night is right there. Join us. So this is a wonderful, really sort of unexpected subject matter that we just we 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 were exploring around podcasting. There'll be sort of a part two on, the, on how to physically do it, and you know, with some coaching from the Zoom Queen, uh, Marquesa Petaway. So that's tomorrow night. <clears throat> Barrett, that has been awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for you. sharing your knowledge. And, you know, I had never done a podcast before, our all-star podcast. And so we decided that, you know, to do a podcast based on my subject matter expertise was I know a hell of a lot of really smart people. And why don't I just <laughs> aggregate them? Right. And uh, have them share uh, with uh, our audience uh, some of their subject matter expertise. And almost all of them are doing individually their own podcast themselves. So that was really the whole seed of the idea for the All Star podcast. So anybody can do this, really. Um, all you have to do is want to do it. And thank you for encouraging us, Barrett. Barrett thank you. And giving us some tips on how to be productive how to get started on a podcast. If you want to know more about how to, to, to get started on a podcast, he gave you uh, his texting number. Um, so there's no excuse. If you've been procrastinating on it, stop it. All the information you need, all the expertise you need is right within our own family of experts, right in our own nation, right in Fraser Nation. So <clears throat> reach out and, 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 and make sure that you do something about it. Don't just listen to it and then go back to procrastinating. Um, you have no excuse. All the information you need is right here. Um, we are at the end you know, of this, this time, Barrett, just goes by. So this is an hour. We're already at an hour. I mean, it just goes by so fast, especially when you have good minds uh, and a great audience with, with, with great curiosity and great questions. Uh, you will be at the Power Networking Conference October the 14th to the 17th, so people can meet you live and in living color if you want to just... Um, be around a bright brother like this. Just join us 
as you know, we have a special offer after each podcast, a very special offer. Um, and we provide it to five people. And the offer is um, a deep discount offer to the Power Networking Conference. Uh, again, limited to five people. You can only get it by emailing me specifically. You, can't, you can go to the Power Networking Conference website and see everything you want to know about the Power Networking Conference. You can't get this offer on our website, but you can learn more about it. October the 14th to the 17th in Houston, Texas at the Hilton of Americas. This is our 19th conference. And Forbes magazine named us one of the top five conferences in America not to be missed. Not one of the top five black conferences, but one of the top five of all conferences in this country. We're, we're the first African-American conference to get that designation. So the conference <clears throat> is worth every dime. An adult registration for our conference is $1,500. We sell out every year. $1,500. If you met one person that could help change the trajectory of your life, would that be worth $1,500? The answer to that would be held to the yes, it would be. Um, we want you to bring a young person. We don't think that we should be meeting and conferencing as black professionals and business owners ever again without inviting young people, 17 to 25. We call them our high school, college age uh, audience. So our student registration is a little bit cheaper. It's $800. Bring your son, bring your daughter, bring someone you're mentoring, bring someone you're coaching. If you put those two together, $800 and $1,500, that's $2,300. We're going to take $1,900 off of that, give it to you for $399. It's good for the first five people. If you don't hear back from me, you are over the five threshold, and you can try the next time. So $399 for one adult and one student. That's two people. Um, <clears throat> That's, uh, uh, we, it costs us more to feed you at the Power Networking Conference four full days than that price. So take advantage of that. Be with us in October. Now, the way to get that is just email me at uh, gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser at frasernet.com. F-R-A-S is in Sam, E-R. Um, say I'm in, in the subject line. And then make sure in the body of the email, put your name and cell number. Put your name and cell number. If I don't see your cell number and I can't hit a button and it'll automatically call you, I'll skip over to the next person. So put your name and your cell number. The first five people tonight um, get the $399 offer, $1,900 off. So that's our offer for tonight. Of course, the last words are saved for our, our guest. And Barrett, if you have some final thoughts, we would love for you to share those with us. I will close with a thought as well, as I normally do. But for our guest, in terms of thoughts and ideas relative to your subject matter, you have the last word. Thank you. Thank you. My, my thoughts are this. It's time to get rid of your excuses. It's time to put yourself in a position to win. It's time for you to stop blaming the government. It's time for you to stop mm -hmm. blaming your parents. It's start time to stop blaming everyone who has affected your life. And it's time to take responsibility and make things happen. Your productivity or procrastination are both in your hands. You have control of them. Whatever happens was a decision that you made. You can, now, can no longer go back and say it's because of someone else or something else. You have nothing but opportunity in front of you. My message to you is take advantage of the opportunity that's given you and make the best of it. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, my final words for tonight is that we all must adapt a leadership persona, a persona of excellence, but most importantly, leadership. Our people have gone backwards 
in the last 50 years. And I believe that if the fish stinks, look to the head. We need leaders. And the thing that differentiates leaders is purely an artistic ability to discern what is a good idea, what is a beautiful idea, what is worth spending time on, and most importantly, what is the problem that is sufficiently interesting, yet sufficiently difficult, that hasn't yet been solved, but the time for solving it is right now. That's what leaders do. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for our special Zoom mastery call. Love you. Thank you, Brother Bedford, always. Thank you, George. Love you, too. Good night, everybody.